Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, we're gonna be discussing the health benefits, benefits of 5G wireless technologies. And this is coming from some guy who worked in the innovation labs of one of the biggest telecoms companies in the world. Patents, projects managed by the top, top dogs. Yeah, I'm gonna be telling you why 5G is amazing in this video. But before I talk about the amazingness, I'm gonna talk about the negatives. I'm just gonna get a few disclaimers out there. Now, we know, we know that there are risks. There are health risks with wireless technologies. The official US government right here, it says they found links between 2G and 3G wireless technologies and cancer in lab rats. It says there's clear evidence right here, clear evidence. So we do know that this form of technology can cause cancer in rats. But what we don't know, and it says it right here in the document, we don't know if 5G will also suffer the same sort of consequences as the lower forms of the generation of communication. It says that, you know, with 5G, because it uses a different higher frequency, the older frequencies, they can penetrate through the skin really easily, go to your organs, whereas the new technology, it hits the skin, it causes heating on the skin. So we don't know what the effects are, and they're gonna be studying it. So they say they don't know how it affects that. Furthermore, regarding the studies that we do know that has negative consequences to humans, once again, I mean, this study here, funded by the United States government, partly funded, I've got to say, here I'm just reading a publication from the BMJ, and this one says, cell phone use and behavioral problems in young children. They did a study, 28,000 children, mums, and they found that by mums using their phones while they're pregnant, it led to their kids having behavioral problems. And if they gave them a phone before seven years old, it, their kids were even more unbehaved, misbehaved, that kind of stuff. And they did the study twice, 28,000 kids. So there's a lot of evidence right there showing, you know, bad stuff. And if you read the ICNIP, is that right? ICNIP, International Commission of Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, every 10 years or so, they publish updated guidelines where they go through all the scientific reports and they tell you, if they agree or disagree or they need some more information. So you've got bodies looking into this and at the state of play today, they're still researching what the health effects of 5G is. So we don't know if it's bad for you at this stage. So I wouldn't jump to any conclusion. And what's great is, if you look at it, the WHO, the World Health Organization, they say they're gonna be coming out with recommendations in 2022 regarding the safety of 5G. And with the WHO, they're probably gonna give a favorable outcome you know, because they wouldn't allow it to roll out so quickly if it wasn't deemed safe, hopefully. Anyway, if you don't trust the WHO, level up. Get a job with the WHO. Show us how smart you are and how good you can be with all that money, and then we'll trust you. But right now, I'm trusting these international body of organizations. Furthermore, look at natural stuff, caffeine. Caffeine is amazing. It boosts, you know, gets you hyped up, productive, all that kind of stuff, keeps you awake at night if you need to be awake. But if you have too much caffeine, negative health effects. It can even cause death. Proven. Caffeine, the tool that we use in our coffee. Coffee adverts everywhere. Caffeine, bad for you. Gluten, some people don't like it. Hay fever, natural in the world. I suffer from it. Too much, I sense it too much. I'm oversensitive to hay fever. Let's talk about nuts. Nuts, did you know that they contain high source of vitamin E. Now vitamin E, in case you don't know, boosts your immune system's response rate. Your white blood cells react faster to infections thanks to vitamin E. Actually, if you guys wanna know all about vitamins and how to boost your health naturally, your immune system, check out our resident medical expert, Dr. Nora. She's got a video all about it. A, B, C, D, E, all that kind of vitamin stuff. And it helps to protect you against any nasty bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, any foreign invaders that reach your body. Your immune system is there on the front line and it's pumping out what we call white blood cells. All that kind of vitamin stuff, letting you guys know how it boosts your immune system. Check it out in the description below. It's gonna be there, you're gonna love it, amazing. Nuts, nuts, vitamin E, but did you know it can also potentially kill you? Some humans react very, very badly to nuts. So there's adverse health effects for a lot of things. Now, one of the issues, I guess, for the people against you know, technology is that at least they label nuts. They tell you this product contains nuts, whereas with the rollout of 5G, 
you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it. Maybe you can see it actually, maybe you can see it in the world, but it feels like it's being forced on you. But you ever looked at your water? What minerals are in your water? Did you know fluoride is in a lot of people's water? Fluoride has been used by some very bad people to do, you know, control on people, yeah? But it also has been linked to the reduction of gum disease. All the dentists have signed on to it. They said having fluoride in water dramatically reduces the number of bad stuff that happens to your gums and your teeth. That's why the governments allow it in our water supply. So just because it isn't labeled doesn't mean it has to be. Or if it needs to be, if you have a new study about why it should be taken out, let us know and things will change. Be the change you want to see in the world. Make the future better. Got that? Now I'm going to talk about the pros of 5G because you guys need to know this. First up, the most obvious one, 5G works at higher frequency so it doesn't penetrate the skin as easily as 2G, 3G, 4G. Health consequences wise, hopefully, we are hoping that that means it will be better for you because there's a skin barrier and skin will hopefully block it out. Just like the skin blocks out the sun. Obviously too much sun gives you, you know, bad stuff but, you know, with this one, because it's a different frequency, hopefully it'll be a good one. So there you go, potentially better. Even better than that. Even better than that. Did you know that your mobile phone communicates with the cell towers? And the closer the cell tower is to you, the less energy the mobile phone needs to send to the cell tower to communicate with it. So potentially with all of these cells being built up all around us, less energy needs to be spent on radiation hitting your face from your mobile phone. Of course, it comes at the cost of environmental radiation and probably we're still gonna use the same amount of radiation from the phone because it will operate at a higher rate, but maybe you'll get a choice to choose a lower bandwidth. Maybe you'll get to choose, hey, I wanna go on 4G and not MM Wave 5G. Maybe you'll get that choice and be able to keep your phone further away. You probably will. So there you go, health benefit for you. Next up, now this is the best health benefit and you need to like seriously consider this, okay? 5G, everyone is on board the corporate world, every country is on board, yeah? This is estimated to generate over three trillion, trillion. I don't know how many zeros that is, that's a lot of zeros in wealth. And what that means is, it's estimated to give over 22 million jobs. Do you know how depressed people get when they're unemployed? They feel like they don't have control. It physically can make you sick. It's actually been shown, studies have been shown that countries with higher unemployment rates have higher death rate. So giving someone a job, giving someone a purpose can save their life. You didn't think that was a health benefit, but it really is. You need to start thinking about how to make people healthy, how to get people have a purpose in life. Next up, now you might be thinking, okay, with this 5G stuff, if you know, someone can access my fridge remotely, if someone can access my microwave remotely, if someone can access you know, a chip inside me remotely, cloud connected, all that stuff, a big security risk. What does that mean? It means the cyber security industry, boom, more jobs, jobs for everyone. You get to learn about cyber security, you get to get paid well for cyber security. And you know, there's two industries you've now saved because you're gonna have to plug in all of these potential holes to make it worthwhile. And it's gonna be worthwhile because they won't release anything that's dangerous or at least they'll patch it like they patch iOS updates every single time. And what's even better, what you need to understand is technology follows investment and follows innovation. So there's going to be so much new technology pumping through as the infrastructure is rolled out and the MM waves come in, all that kind of stuff. Things you haven't even thought of. I mean, they're saying about AR, VR, we're going to get into that stuff. You, did you know about FaceTime before 3G, 4G? Of course you didn't know about it. Did you have apps and games before the 2G, 3G iPhone? You didn't. And this was just like 10 years ago. Imagine the amount of advancements you're going to have in the world in the future. I mean, they're already talking about remote surgery being performed anywhere in the world thanks to robotics and the bandwidth communication strength of 5G. Now you might think, okay, like surely you'd want a specialist in like a, a, a broadband connected wired cable, you know, to be secure. But you gotta understand some fields in the world are highly specialized. For example, if you want a brain surgeon, you want a spine surgeon, you want a foot surgeon, they're highly specialized. There's only few people in the world that can perform the operation. So when things happen and your doctor's on holiday, and the other one's sick, imagine if that doctor could plug into 5G and do that remote surgery via the robots, low latency bandwidth remotely and save your life. What's even better, sensors. There's gonna be sensors everywhere, traffic light sensors. Just say you're on the way to work. There's a red traffic light, but there's no cars in sight. 
The sensor will know that and it will make it green. You'll have a quicker journey to work. What does that mean? It means you spend less time in traffic, which means you become happier, which means you spend less time getting sad, which means your health is boosted. Amazing, even better. Sensors inside ambulances. Imagine something bad happens to you, an ambulance comes along, picks you up. They have vitals being measured on your body. They can tell your heart rate, all this kind of new technology that they're gonna be sensing and they can be uploading all of that data while they're driving you to the hospital thanks to the connectivity of 5G, relaying that data to the hospital. That's gonna save lives, literally, it's gonna save lives. I mean, we've gotta get it right, but it's gonna save lives. Next up, let's talk about telehealth. Yeah, GPs, do you know, when you're ill, what do you have to do? You wanna bunk off work, yeah? You have to go to the GP, and GP has other people there who might be legitimately ill, unlike you trying to scarf off work, or maybe you are ill as well. You might cough, you might sneeze, everyone's spreading bacteria left, right and centre. You might pick something up or you might spread an infection. Then you sit down with your GP, coughing in their face, they're going to get ill and they're going to be spreading all that bacteria to everyone. It's nonsense. Potentially, with the power of 5G, instead of being at home, you know, doing a FaceTime call with the doctor to do telehealth as you do it today, potentially you could be out on the beach relaxing, saying, yo doctor, I feel a bit ill. You know, or, or like legitimately on the bus getting your groceries or, or towards the pharmacy, it's saving you time. You could be communicating when you're out and about, getting that prescription, telehealth, the doctor making you feel better, curing your health. Health benefit, you can't do that today. And now we're gonna talk about vindication. Do you know how many people get innocently accused of doing bad things like crimes? Imagine, imagine we live in a world where you can be tracked anywhere you go, anywhere you go, 5G knows where you are because of the sensor tracking and mobile phones constantly communicating your signal and there's security cameras everywhere. If someone accuses you or implicates you in a crime, you can go, yo, 5G, vindicate me. 5G, what will it do? It will be able to pull up that security footage. Obviously, you have the right security levels, all that kind of stuff. Only the right people have access to it. But you'll be able to show your face in the location where you really were, proving that you didn't commit the crime. So you can go, here, officer, check out my 5G tracking information. You have my consent and they'll be able to check it out and know it wasn't you. Maybe, you know, you give someone your phone. There's security implications from this. You can probably like, hack it and all that stuff, but cybersecurity industry is gonna make sure it works. And it'll be a great tool to prove you never did the crime. There you go. You don't get sent to prison. Your health, better. You're like, phew, all that stress of having to go to court, pleading your case, all that nonsense, asking for witnesses. Don't have to do that. Because of 5G, the amazingness. And now we're gonna talk about some of the awesome stuff coming down the pipeline. I remember about 10 years ago, the CTO of ARM said, by 2020, we're gonna have CPUs the size of blood cells. We're gonna have CPUs the size of blood cells. Now, if you wanna do this kind of like nanobot stuff that's trickery that's happening, how are the CPUs gonna communicate with each other? Wirelessly, you can't have a wire <laughs> going for your blood. That'd be silly. How's it gonna get its latest patch, you know, to fix all the bugs? It has to be done wirelessly. You don't want a hole in your body, do you? You don't have to like pull out dra blood, draw blood, run it through a filtration system. So it needs to be updated wirelessly. This is gonna enable so much stuff. Imagine, now, now, just stay with me here because this is gonna happen in the future. Imagine you can insert a chip in your brain. I mean, the guy who made Tesla, he's already working on it. He wants to insert a chip in your brain. It can solve so many psychological issues. I mean, some people, they're not as lucky as, as us. They, yeah, they're not as lucky and there's some diseases that really causes bad stuff like dementia. Imagine you can get a microchip in your head that can fix these really bad health conditions. Imagine. Now, this, this can do so much good in the world. Getting that microchip in your brain, you're now instantly on the level, thinking right again. How are you gonna do that software patch? Do you really want an exposed hole to that chip? You don't. You probably wanna do that update wirelessly and you could probably be out on the beach getting that wireless update. Just say you got a headache, uh, download some data, your headache's now fixed. Just say you're, you're mourning over an ex-lover or whatever it is, upload some data, download some data, boom, you're fixed. Anytime, you can be fixed. Now this obviously is a few decades away, but the potential of this wireless technology to solve, to help, it is there, it is there. It's gonna help you out. Just say you, something bad happens to your limbs, you need to replace your arm. You get a transhuman arm, how are you going to communicate to it? Do you have to translate the nervous system? Just say your nerves are damaged. How are you going to translate the nervous system to the arms? Imagine chipping your brain wirelessly, communicating to your robotic arm. Boom, wireless ra radiation solved. It helped you out. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. In fact, it can be an amazing technology to help our health. Now, you might be thinking, yo, what you're telling me sounds ludicrous, but there's already experiments being done today 
and the fact that this industry is worth over three trillion is gonna drive innovation. As soon as they find a use case for it, people are gonna invest in it. They're gonna to wanna to be part of that future and that future can become a reality thanks to the fast bandwidth of this amazing system. And furthermore, the ultimate, the ultimate future, AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. Now this is gonna be a game changer. We don't know when it will come. It might be here already, we don't know. It might be here in 10 years, it might be here in 100 years. Now this is a computer that can think better than a human. Now on the exponential curve, we're getting closer and closer. As I said, it might be already here, but what I gotta say is, how is the AGI, the Artificial General Intelligence, which can think exponentially faster and better than any human in existence ever. It knows all of the knowledge of everything. It knows all of the YouTube. It knows all of the history of the world. It knows all of everyone's tracking. It will be able to help humanity in ways we haven't even imagined. It will be able to know what kind of crops to grow, you know, how to save the environment, how to save global warming, how to, save, how to cure cancer. It will be able to do that in an instant, how to go to Mars. It can help us in so many ways. And the only thing it needs is to be connected to you. I was once driving in a road and it was raining like hell. I couldn't see a thing, so I pulled over and I was trying to get the map's direction to where I was going in the middle of nowhere and there was no cellular network. I literally had to wave my phone in the air and luckily I did get reception and I was able to you know, get my maps working again. Imagine if I wasn't able to do that because I never had the connectivity the super awesome AI wouldn't have been able to help me when I was stranded. So the only way we can get this AGI to help you in locations around the world is with connectivity. And this, this, is, this is why you need to understand that the health benefits of 5G and wireless technology in the future, 6G, 7G, 10G, it's only gonna help, okay, it's potentially judging based on the history of humanity, it's gonna be net positive. It's gonna be so amazing for you. Now, if you're one of these doomsday sayers in which you're scared of new technology, you know, robot overlords, all that kind of stuff, that's one thing aside, but generally you gotta be an op optimistic kind of dude because the bad stuff can happen to you anyway. Like I said, if you don't want to take you out, I can just poison the water supply, very easy. There's so many ways in which you know bad stuff can happen to you today without the need of 5G, all that kind of stuff that you gotta think optimistically and as you can see you know sensors for the ambulance when you get in trouble telehealth to save you time you know the more time you have the happier you are the less depressed you are the less you rely on drugs you know there's so much good stuff for this technology jobs being employed industries being built we need jobs right now so this is going to save a lot of people so i hope you guys got this new insight into the world of why 5g is going to be amazing and I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. All right, how much are you gonna pay me?